Hello YouTube, today in this video I'm going to be running through the tools I use the most as an apprentice electrician. As you can see, I've got a lot of tools in here, however most of them aren't used too often. Anyway, there's only going to be hand tools mentioned today, no power tools will be included. Let's get straight into it. The first tool we have on this list is a pair of side cutters. This is a tool I'll use pretty much every day and you'll use this tool for cutting cable, stripping cable and you can also use it for cutting the ends off a of tie wraps, which I do, or zip ties. Now mine are the Nipex ones. These are pretty big side cutters compared to other ones that you can get, but mine cost me 35 pounds from Amazon, all which is equivalent to 47 United States dollars. Now, if you're just starting out as an apprentice, a pair of side cutters will be pretty much one of the first tools that you'll be wanting to buy. Moving on to the next tool. The second tool that we have on this list is a tape measure. Now it's pretty self-explanatory. I use this all the time, just measuring things in general, like containment, that kind of thing, or pretty much anything to be honest. And yeah, mine is the Milwaukee Magnetic Tape Measure. It is five meters or 16 feet. Cost me 17 pounds off Amazon again, or $23. As I say, the prices may have changed by now, who knows? But yeah, what I like about it mainly is the magnetic feature, which as you can see, yeah, it just magnetically connects to things. So for example, if, if you've got something magnetic on the one side of the room where you're measuring to, you can use that it's basically a spare hand pretty much and it's kind of cool so yeah tape measure essential second tool i use it all the time the third tool that we have on this list is a spirit level now i'll tend to use a spirit level a lot during the first fix of the job mainly but it can be used on the second fix too you use this mainly when you're leveling off things that you've mounted to the wall so that, for example if you're putting a new fuse board up or if you're putting some sockets in or if you're putting some containment in that kind of thing pretty self-explanatory there are some people out there who claim they have an eye like a spirit level which that is a bit controversial but for me i always use it and then i know for sure everything is leveled off perfectly the spirit level is the stanley fat max one it cost me 14 pounds or 19 dollars and what i like about this one is it is magnetic as you can see which allows you to stick it to like metal trunking metal conduit that kind of thing by itself which is pretty handy moving on to the next tool the next thing that electricians use a lot is a marker pen now here's mine it is a bit different to a normal marker pen as you can see which yeah what i like about this one though is you can refill it and it has this little clip which clips into your pocket. This one is the Tracer marker pen. It's a cheaper alternative to the Picker marker pen and pencil. But yeah, this is what people usually use, just a standard marker pen, but I like these ones. I also have the pencil from the same brand as well. As I say, cheaper to the Picker pencil, and it comes out of the slot of like that. You can pump it up just by pressing the button. It comes out a lot, as you can see. And then we have the refillables to come with it, so you can change the lead. If you like, give you quite a variety there. And yeah, just way better than just having a normal pencil. Because like, if you need to sharpen it and all that, it's just annoying. With this one, you can sharpen it in the holder thing. So in here, it has a little sharpener, which is cool. But yeah, the whole set of these, one, two, three, cost me £16 or $32, sorry. So good buy on Amazon. I'd much recommend it. The fifth kind of tool that they come on to is the pliers. We have two sets here, obviously. The normal combination pliers and the long nose pliers. Every electrician will have these. They are pretty essential. And yeah, you should know what these do. But if you don't, you just use the normal ones for just gripping onto things. You can twist objects. You can cut cable even with them. And then you've got the long nose ones, which are just mainly for getting into tight areas. So say if like you put a hole in the wall and you're trying to fish down some cable, you can grip onto it, grip onto your rods and that kind of thing with the long nose ones. These are the Nipex ones, both from Nipex, got them from Amazon, and they were £30 or $40 for these long nose ones, or £24 and $32 for the normal combination ones. Yep, not too much to say. They're just great things to have, use them all the time, moving on. The next tool that we come on to is the Volt Stick, and what I really like about this is the ease of use and the convenience. But yeah, I use it too much, to be honest, because as we all know, a lot of us, these things can get you in trouble from time to time. Um, but it's just real quick for identifying if a cable is live or not. Mine is the Martindale one, £30 or $40 off Amazon. Yep, it has, comes with a little uh, light on it as well. You can put that on. And you can also change the sensitivity of this. It's on high sensitivity at the moment. You can change it. Not too much to say. You want to be using the voltage tester when you can. But this thing is a quick way of identifying the power. And you use it a lot, I do. Here we have the proper way of identifying if there is voltage or not, and that is with a voltage tester. 
Yes, mine is an expensive one. It is the Fluke T5 1000, which cost me £150 or $200. It is expensive, but that's not the point. The point is you are trusting this thing of your life. So I thought it's better to be safe than sorry, so I'd buy an expensive one, which I do not regret. I'm much happy that I bought the expensive one. I do know that you can get ones for like £50, which do the same job pretty much. But yeah, I have a lot of trust in Fluke, well when I'm brand. You can test the volts, the current, the resistance, all with this. And a lot better than a volt stick. I use it all the time, as much as I can. And we'll move on to the next tool. The next tool that we have is a hacksaw. I use this a lot, really. I use it mainly for cutting plastic trunking, plastic conduit, plastic dado. You get the idea. You can also use it for cutting metal, which I do do that sometimes. However, I a lot of the time use a grinder for cutting metal because it's just quicker. But for this, it's just very convenient just getting the hacksaw out rather than getting a grinder and then putting goggles on and some sites don't allow it. Yeah, mine was £12 or $16. Got it from eBay, I think. But you should be able to get these on Amazon. It doesn't really matter what brand you get too much of a hacksaw, to be honest. They're all the same, really. Maybe if you get a really cheap one, it might, might not be too good. But yeah, mine's Barco, and we'll move on to the next tool. We then come on to the screwdriver set, and this is probably one of the most obvious things on this list. I use this all the time, obviously, just for tightening pins, loosening pins, all the time, every day. And yeah, I'm a big fan of mine. Mine are the Weira ones, the Weira Slimline screwdrivers. As you can see, the insulation like stays uniform with the rest of the screwdriver, which is great. And I really like the design of these too. Mine were from Amazon, they cost me £35, which is about $47. And yes, it doesn't really matter what screwdriver set you have really too much, as long as they're insulated. But I just got these ones and I'm really a big fan of them. I'll move on to the next tool now. We then come on to the utility knife. Now this one is a bit different to most utility knives, because as you can see, when I open it up, we have two knives. So we have the normal Stanley knife and we have another bigger utility knife. So you can like fold these one away and then have another one. But yeah, um, a utility knife, electricians use it all the time. Stripping armoured cable, just opening packaging and new things that come. Yeah, you find a lot of uses for this thing. It's very handy. Mine is the CK one. Got it from Amazon, £12, which is about $16. Everyone wants a utility knife. Great thing to have. We are coming towards the end of this video, but we have still three or four more tools to mention. Firstly, we've got the hammer. So with a hammer, electricians use these for when you're clipping cable to the wall. Sometimes you use the nail clips, like the cable clips which require nails. So you just bang the nails in with a hammer. You can also use a hammer for, say, if you're chiseling out a part of a wall. Use a bolster chisel, bang the bolster chisel with a hammer. Yep. Anyway, mine is the Stanley Hammer. got mine from, Am uh, not Amazon, Screwfix for £10, which is about $14 roughly. But I can see on Amazon they're doing an offer where they're doing this hammer for £7, which is a bargain really, which is about $10 roughly. So I'd pick it from Amazon if you want to do that. But all electricians should have a hammer really. It just comes in handy. We then come on to the combination square or set square as we call it in the UK. And yeah, I got mine for £9 or $12 from Screwfix, as I say, a UK store. On Amazon, I would stay clear. At the moment, it's currently £15, so a lot more expensive. But this one, it comes with another set square, which has like a little spirit level on, which you can adjust it. So maybe if you get in a set square, get another one, because you don't really need the two in one. And as for set squares, you do not need an expensive one either. Anyone will do, really, because they, they, they all do the same thing. But you use this for just marking up materials or marking up cuts. So say if you're cutting some trunking or some dado, you just mark up the cut with a set square to make sure you're getting a... Uh, straight line so I just have this a lot of electricians use these uh, yeah it's just good the second and last thing that we have on today's list for the tools I use the most as an apprentice electrician is a socket tester so if you don't know how this thing works it's basically if it tells you if a socket is live or not so for example if you want to work on a socket you want to isolate the circuit to kill off the power and then a way of checking that you've killed off the power is by plugging this into that socket and then if, if, the, if no lights come on then the socket is dead, got no power to it. And then if the lights come on, that means the socket is still alive and you've got the wrong circuit turned off. Yeah, anyway, mine is the LAP1 LAP. Uh, I got it from Screwfix for a £7.50. And for some reason, it's not available on Amazon anyway, I checked. So if you're in the UK, you can get it from Screwfix. As for America, I don't, I, I don't think they do it in America. So you'll have to get another brand. There's plenty of these about. Yeah, uh, moving on to the last thing. 
The last tool that I'm going to be talking about today that I use a lot at work is grips or water pump pliers. We call them grips in the UK. Yeah, you can get these in all different sizes. Mine are about medium size. You can get a lot bigger ones than these. You can get smaller ones than these. You use these for like tightening nuts and bolts or loosening. You can also do it for tightening like a stuffing gland. If you've got like a metal stuffing gland. And I got mine from Amazon. They were £23 at the time, which is about $31. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for all the prices in the video also, I have converted it to the nearest dollar. Just to let you know, I even gave the exact figure just to the nearest pound or dollar. Anyway, mine are the Nipex grips, I forgot to mention. Nipex do many models of these in different sizes. And then you've got this little button here which you can adjust how big you want the claws to be. So that's all I have to say on this. I've now touched upon every tool that I wanted to speak about today. These are the tools that I think I use the most as an apprentice electrician. There'll be links down in the description to where you can buy these tools off Amazon mainly. And yeah, obviously I could have spoke about some more tools today, but that would have kept the video dragging. I've done that in other videos, so check out my other videos. And if you've enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed the video, thank you very much and see you later. Goodbye.